Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our AGS 37 Vegan and we're looking at a C-based Elint data collection and then data analysis for use in a follow-up mission. So we've already done a land-based Elint uh, tutorial video and you can find that in the Vigan tutorial playlist. Now that's a little bit different. You've got different parameters, different restrictions. So this one's going to be specifically C-based. So I'm just going to go on through it step by step. I'll explain the steps as I go. First thing, we're going to be on the ground for a little while. We do not, do not want to corrupt our NAV system, so we're going to turn to BER standby. Next, we're going to go to the F10 map. We are here. What we know is that hostiles have incurred our sea space. They are to the uh, southwest. We don't know anything else. We don't know bearing. We don't know how many. We don't know a distance. It could be 5 miles, 50 miles, 200 miles, 500 miles. What we do know is that there are one or more Grisha type Russian vessels. And that will come in important to know which type of vessel it is. You'll see later. So the first step is we need to create some dummy waypoints that we will use a little bit later. Uh, so without questioning, first of all, we'll just go make them. We're going to make them in the rough directions of the ships. Uh, we don't know where they are, but just here or somewhere we'll do. We're going to make Mike 1. Mike 2. And we're making the Mike points rather than Bravo points. Bravo points specifically, specifically for navigation. These are uh, for weapons application, the Mike points because we can move these about on our radar without any problems and we're going to, we will be doing that as soon as we found the ships we'll have to find them via our radar we don't know where they are and then we'll move these into position to help us plot a an optimized elint flight path for gathering data um, if we did with these with bravo points i'm certainly not an expert but moving bravo points on the radar tends to re-reference your nav system so that's why i'm using mic points there may be another way of doing it i don't know but uh, this is my way right mic one two three and four back to the cockpit Let's load this data up. Before we do that, I'm going to just show you the keys to bring up the kneeboard. That. Kneeboard left that. Kneeboard right that. Data cartridge down that. Data cartridge up that. Kneeboard up. Cycle pages until you get to ground crew. There's ground crew. And we want to go left one on the cartridge. I think that's down or up. I can't remember. It's left for me. And uh, we want to load marks from an F10 map, and it contains nine marks. That's right. Let's load our marks in. We could have done this straight into the data entry computer to be super realistic, but it just takes more time doing it that way. So we're just going to do it like this. We couldn't do it from the mission editor. Well, I suppose we could do from the from the mission editor as well, but that's just uh, that's cheating. Uh, so right, let's input the data cartridge. Ref longitude latitude input nine zero zero nine nine. Input. Wait till the zeros. output default position get rid of kneeboard sanity check make sure all these are roughly at the right range so bravo one check mike one yes and it's four swedish miles that's about right bravo two uh, sorry mike two uh 50 swedish five swedish miles bravo three five and a half swedish miles mike four six swedish miles they all sound about right and back to default ls that's that. Uh, next, we want to set up our equipment. So, to our equipment, uh, pylon six is going to be our elint pod uh, just slash jammer. We're going to use the U twenty two slash A and to balance that out. And we may need countermeasures, so we're going to have the dispenser pod. Arm up. Request rearming. Pods armed up. We now need to set them up. Jammer pod. Um, we want it in elint mode, data collection mode, which is A here, and we've got F standby. Low sensitivity, medium sensitivity, high sensitivity, mixed sensitivity. So if we know the type of sensitivity that we're looking for and we know how to optimize this for the elint search, we'll, we can go G, H or J. I certainly don't have a clue what sensitivity I want to be on. You'd have to know your, really know your stuff if you did. Um, and so I'm going to go on K, automatic sensitivity. It will automatically change the sensitivity based on what thinks is best. Unless you know better, use K. So A and that. Now we need to set our dispensers up. So I'm going to go to manual mode, program one, chaff only because these ships will not be firing heat seeking missiles and streak off and uh, light emission and sound emission on. OK, that is our aircraft set up. Next, we're going to turn our nav, nav mode on. Take off. Check gear. Right, let's turn into our first waypoint, mic one. OK, that is our first waypoint. Off burn. Let's just get roughly facing that area. Where's it gone? There it is. Okay, we're going to put our 
hold on and our AFK lever on. Next, we've got to find the fleet. So let's uh, turn our radar on, radar in A1 mode. Nothing there, so let's zoom out to 120 clicks. Uh, whoops, wrong way. 120 clicks. Ah, look at that. Bang on the nose. That was a bit freaky coincidence, but that is almost certainly the ships. They're 80 kilometers. Uh, that is 40, 80, 120. And so that's almost certainly them there. I can't see anything else. And I know they're north, uh, sorry, southwest. So I think that's got to be them. So the next thing is we have to think about which route we're going to fly to best collect this data. Now, the JAMA, sorry, the Elint pod, um, only has a frontal facing cone. And because of that, according to experts I've spoken to, the best way to collect data of the target is to go in a box around it. So I need four points, hence why I put these four waypoints on. I mean, I guess if you were being super optimal, you would do kind of like a star shape. So you go outwards and then inwards and then outwards and then inwards and then outwards and inwards. But that's going to be asking a bit much. So the box it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to, using our radar screen, we're going to move these four waypoints to there, there, there and there to create a box around the target. But they've got to be at the right distance from the target. That is that you've got to be in a zone called the nailing zone where the radar can nail you, i.e. it can scan you. That, that's That's being scanned is being nailed and not too close where it can spike you which is where it can lock you get a track on you and fire a missile so you've got to get that lovely zone in between and that will depend on what ship it is so you've got to know what ship it is and we know that it is a Grisha it will spike you at 10 miles it will nail you at about 20 miles so we want to between, be between that 10 and 20 miles so to make it well if we just be uh, if we say 12 miles we'll take 12 miles and that should be safe just outside of a spike but well within nails Next thing we need to do is convert 12 miles into, or 12 nautical miles, into kilometers. So let me go and do that quickly. So Google says that 12 nautical miles is 22 kilometers. So that's fine. Now we're going to do some yard sticking. There may be a better way to do this. I don't know of it, so I just yard stick. So we've got our guy is there. Our fleet is there. We need a reference. And um, it just so happens that this circle is about 23 kilometers when you're in 120 kilometer range mode. So we can use this as our yardstick. Uh, so let's uh, get on with it. What we're going to do is create a box around this target here. And these points are all going to be um, just under the size of this circle here. That's how we're going to do it. Need to look at the keys quickly. Going to need our radar stick up, down, left, right. We're going to need T1 fix and TV fix. Okay, so let's just get on with it. We're an autopilot. Bravo 1 on mic 1. T1 fix. Radar stick move. And we're going to put it uh, essentially so it's on the outside kind of corner of where these two inter. Uh, so basically, yeah, about like that. If you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm trying to yard. Oh, no, sorry. Let me just have a think about this. Uh, no, that's wrong, isn't it? This here is 23 miles from there to there, isn't it? So we want to be more about kind of there, 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 and there. Kilometers, sorry, not miles. God. This is uh, difficult doing it on the fly. Right, so let me unpause, try that again. So it wants to be more like that, doesn't it? A little bit further in, maybe. So that from there to there is about the same as there to there. About 22 kilometers, about 12 miles within. Nails outside of spike. Right, I hope I've got that right. Uh, so that's that. And then TV fix to move the waypoint. That's that done. Next. Mic 2, same deal, but T1 fix. But we're going to go there. It's about right, isn't it? TV fix. Next, mic 3. T1 fix, move. T. Uh, wait, uh, what's it about? There. Think about there. TV fix. Mic four. T one. Move. About. About there. You say something like that. TV. And now let's have a quick go round the lot. So mic one. Mic two. Mic three. Mic four. And we've created our box around the target that we're going to fly around now and it's going to be within the nail range and if I've done it right, fingers crossed, and outside of the spike range so we won't be able to fire a missile. So, unpause, autopilot off, AFK off, 
Let's find our next point. Uh, sorry, we've got mic four selected. Let's try that again. Mic one. Let's find it and navigate to it. Regards, altitude. Altitude it doesn't seem to make the difference in the quality of the data that you get. So because of that, we're going to keep low because um, it's much harder for the hostile to fire. That's not him there, is it? No. Much harder for the hostile to fire his missiles at us if we're low and if we're fast. So we want to go fast and low. So let's put stage one burn on. Head towards mic one. Get low. There, when we can go low. There's no terrain that's going to be blocking us. And that is specific to a naval mission. Right, we're going to skip time now. Okay. We've started getting our first nails. That there is a nail from that hostile at the one, one to two o'clock position. We can still see the target. Just bear with me a second. We zoom out. We can see the target is there on our two o'clock. We're going to head uh, to our, keep heading to our waypoint. It would be nice if we could see them visually. It would give me a nice visual reference. And I can't. So we've just got to take our word that he's there. I don't think that was... There, there, there they are, look. Oop. Don't go off course. Get down low. And they've stopped nailing us. And the idea is we want to promote them nailing us. So we want to make ourselves certainly nailable. Hence being in this configuration and this distance. Um, but we seem to be perfectly safe from spike. No chance of spike. It looks like there's about seven or eight ships there. Whoops. Let's keep going. Uh, we've passed waypoint one now. We're on waypoint two. So let's keep going. We're going to speed up time now. Two kilometers away from waypoint two. Uh, they haven't spiked us, so we're all good so far. There they are. Waypoint two passed. We're now on waypoint three. Towards waypoint three. Let's see if we can find the hostiles again. It's nice to, if you can, keep an eye on them. Now, the distance that we are to the hostiles depends on uh, what type of vessel they are. These are Grishas, so this is easy mode, if you like. They can only fire 10 miles. You're more likely to fight something bigger, like a Type 54 destroyer um, or something, in which case uh, you wouldn't be at 10 miles. You would be more like at um, 40 or 50 miles. So you probably wouldn't be able to see the hostiles in that case. But uh, this makes it a bit more understandable, I find. Whoops. Lost the spike got the spike back. Uh, where are we anyway? We are 20 kilometers away. Let's skip time. One kilometer and waypoint four, uh, three reached. No, nothing bad so far. Okay, on our way to our last waypoint. See if we can see the hostiles. Negative. See if we can see them on our scanner. There they are. They're on the two to three o'clock position. Just can't see them for some reason. Probably behind the A pillar. There they are. There they are, look. So by um, covering all the angles like this, introducing as many angles as we can around the hostile, we are optimizing our ELINT collectible data. We are, um, we can create a smaller area of likelihood of where that hostile actually is when analyzing our data. And we'll see that in a bit. If we didn't do this box around the target, we would have much less accurate data we were fine right we've got uh, 10 kilometers let's speed up okay one kilometer mic four reached and we can now back to lima one that is the base so off we go so we did it right uh, we were outside of the spike zone inside the nail zone so that was pretty much perfect we're going to stick our stage three burner on get to base once we land at base we are going to analyze our data Negative, I'm gonna stay here. Right, and let's look at our data. First things first, we've got to turn it in BER standby mode to access our data. The board up cycle. And we've got ELINT. We found one times emitter. Uh, so it turns out there was one ship, uh, or at least one type of ship, but probably one ship within that bunch that would actually emit, uh, actually emit, actually had a radar. It is on that PRF, uh, post repetition frequency. Don't know what the B means. Uh, the first time we picked the signal up was eight, 11 minutes past 8, and the last signal was 0, zero. Don't know why it says that. 
sequence broadcast one second silent uh, so I think that means it's the sequence broadcast is one second it was silent is two seconds I think it means it's, it nails for one second and is silent for two seconds in between I stand to be corrected what it's given us is a northing and westing and so uh, sorry a northwest east a northing and easting that is a top left hand box uh, of our search box and a southeast northing and easting which is the bottom left of our box of our search box within that box is where the guy is okay and the smaller that box the better the data that we got if we've done it really good we can get that down to a mile two miles a mile and a half so let's go and do something with the data we can do it within dcs or outside of dcs and we'll do showing both so let's do it within dcs first of all i don't have two screens so i'm going to write this data down okay got the data written down jump to the f10 map uh, let's find out roughly where this is next. So first data was uh, 253023. So look at the top left hand side of the screen. 253023, somewhere down here. Okay, and easting 541107. 541107. And the northing was 3023, so down, down, down. Okay, that's it there. That's the top left hand corner of the box. New point. 252730. So, 252730 there. And 0541906. 054. Oh dear, this is going to be pretty. It's going to be a big box. We don't like that very much. 1954106. Uh, there. And 2730 is. Oh, it's difficult this is. There. Okay, that is our search box where we found the target. And it's going to be depressingly big, isn't it? I hate it when it does this. So the box is. Oh, God, seven miles across. Ugly. Oh, uh, so it's very frustrating when you get a big box like that. It means that the, the data that we got wasn't particularly accurate. And that's annoying because we did really well. Uh, we did everything right. I've tested this before. This exact scenario uh, before the camera went on. I got it to within 1.5 miles. So phew, go figure. And I don't know um, why, what was different between this and that. The only difference is I didn't speed the other one up. I did speed this one up for the video. Would that make any difference? Probably not. So it's probably just a case of luck, really. I, I don't really know. But anyway, uh, 2.5 miles, it is what it is. Uh, so what we've determined with our ELINT is, is, is within that rectangle. And we can then go and prosecute that with a follow-up mission or whatever we want to do. So annoying to see such a big box. Never mind. Next thing we're going to do is use this from outside DC as well. So let's just go and shut all this data down. Unpause. Get out of there. Uh, it's going to shut down. Okay, we're out now. Uh, let's go to C drive. Users. That's me. You'll be called something else. Uh, save games DCS ATS 337 ELINT data that is your ELINT data from your board your uh, thingy board next we're going to go to the app uh, to type the uh, the details into so vegan ELINT app this guy and this guy and this is the app ELINT app Firebase app browse find your alien data type it in and there it is it can tell you it's a i don't know what that means it's a grisha search radar and something else search, maybe the name of the radar silent for two seconds broadcast for one second is the meter number one and there it is there's your little box off of there's dubai um and that's it your box if you've done it uh should be every time i've done it before it's been a box about that big and why it's a big box now i don't know i must have done something slightly wrong but there you go that's life that's it. That's everything I've got to show on that. And um, that's the most efficient way I can get to doing this. Um, you, that's it. I don't know any other way of doing it. I hope that helps and I'll see you later.